What's going on, everybody? It's Trey from Trade Talks here. And we are here for week eight of our NFL picks, locks, and upsets. It's spooky season, and it's spooky because we don't have Colge in the studio today, but that's all right because we do have Larry in the studio, Fitz. How you doing, brother? Hey, you know, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing all right. Cardinals beat Seattle in a thriller. I was, uh, I had about 17 heart attacks throughout the, the whole game. The thing was, was like, just based off of how I know I watched the Jags play, I don't like to be sober, and I don't like to not have a lot of emotion. I would have aged 10 years watching that game if yeah. I was a fan of either team. Yeah. How were you able to survive, and how did that win feel at the end of the game? It felt good. It was a rough road. I I think if we would have lost, my coach would have been blamed for a lot of dumb shit. Because he did a lot of things that we need to clean up next time we play Seattle. I think he can't do that against them. We're not going to expect to pick Seattle three times off like we did. But, um, yeah. It was it was ugly, but it was fun. I mean, it's... But back and forth. I mean, I'm yelling at the TV because we're down ten. And we're doing stupid shit. Like... It was there was five five minutes left and we're like wasting clock. I mean, there's a minute going and we're yeah, not it took getting a any. while for you guys to stop the ball. Yeah, we're not getting anywhere, and I'm like, well, yeah, this isn't good. We're already wasting clock. We have to make a defensive stop. We're playing Russell. He has to get one first down. That's not very hard to do. And yeah. luckily, we got bailed out by some Vance Joseph defensive play calls. I love yeah, that. your de- defense was, yeah. a, was a barn burner. That, I honestly feel like your defense was the only reason why is what saved you. I say and, Simmons only played five snaps, and one of them was the INT, yeah. and it was a bail. It's the same thing. It was the zero blitz. He had everybody sit, and he had both middle linebackers sitting right in between our D tackles with edge rushers. And every time we gave him, either we sent him or we shot him back out and that time we shot him out he tried to throw a junk ball over the middle and Isaiah is sitting right there waiting for it so yeah, that was pretty good it was pretty good Barber I like that game the thing was was I think that game with uh, Arizona really kind of showed that the discrepancy in the playoffs this year especially with seven teams I don't think that the difference between a seven seed this year and a one seed is gonna be that big of a difference I think this no. year you're gonna get an obscure Super Bowl Cam, what what is your opinion on uh, the race in the AFC and the NFC so far? This you know, I honestly think it's going to be a rematch, Steelers versus Cardinals. Really? You think you're going to get a 10-year callback? Or no, this is, that was 2008. That's 2009. A 12, 2009, so yeah. about 11 years for, for Fitz. Fitz. We're winning. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. That would be the perfect callback. But at the same time, I don't know. Like I see the confidence in Murray, but at the same time, He's got to quit making mistakes. He I makes a it, lot of mistakes. I think it's a lot to do with our coaching, though, too. And I and I love to see the fire in him because he gets pissed off about dumb little things like bubble screens. We got a few of them blown up on plays, and it's like we're doing it's second and thirteen now, and you can clearly see Kyler's like, like what the fuck are we doing? Like why are we running this play? Like that's dumb. It's getting us behind already. And then we did a different dial-up of it where we did a play action. We gave it to Chase Edmonds through the middle at like an inside zone. And he pulled it and threw it to Larry on a bubble screen where he was playing slot. And we had two receivers outside. And that got 10 yards. So we need to do different dial-ups of bubble screens or things that we do. But we need to make it look like a different look. Make, because... you, you guys honestly should make it into an RPO read option. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So... And... And start doing like little mesh things because that we got a sixty yard catch from DeAndre and it was just catch and run off a little mesh where corners got trafficked and he was gone. I would love to see some of your other receivers get involved though because DeAndre Hopkins Larry though, did some though, he's, though he's an elite receiver and you've got to get him involved. I'm not saying don't completely turn away from him, but you gotta see there's it. times where it seems like he's Christian Kirk's had four touchdowns over the past two weeks. Yeah. From from uh Kyler, so I like that. But and I'm also liking Larry. You don't see the things that he does statistically for this team. He clocked that ball at two seconds for our team. He's the guy who's running to get the football to hand to the center 
so we can clock the ball. Yeah, no, I saw a video. Sure. I saw a video of that. Yeah, and that's, that's the end of the game. You don't get that from anybody else, but the best man on the field, Larry. So that's the small things that gets us in games and keeps us in games. That was uh, definitely a game of the week candidate. Uh, a game that was not a game of the week candidate was when Cam Newton got pulled out against the 49ers. Cameron, what happened there? I don't know. Cam's just not being Cam, but I don't know. I just feel like Cam just is not fitting. It's Bill, Bill doesn't know how to run Cam efficiently because they're running him too much. They're making too much of a... A heavy running team, but yet again, Cam's not making complete. Cam's not completing passes. He's throwing them to the different team, like three interceptions in the last game, and then we had to we had to bench him and put Jared Sidham in. So I mean, like, I don't know. I think maybe Bill needs to use find a way to use him differently, or Jared needs to step up and start playing. So is this gonna end? Is this time for Patriots fans to panic, or do you think do you think everybody in the Patriots fandom needs to calm down a little bit? Oh, there, it's for sure uh, somewhat panic time because you know this is the worst record ever. Yeah, it's for sure a little panic time because you know the Bills are five and two right now, and the Jets are zero and six. But I mean, it's not really panic time, but at the same time, we got to worry about the Bills, and we're playing them next week. We're playing them this week, so. It's going to be a doozy. It's going to be a battle. If we don't beat the Bills, we're not winning our division. And this is Bill's worst record since he's coached this team. Yeah. So it's it's just a it's change. Brand new territory. Yeah, it's a change of pace with not having Brady and changing everything. So else. Bill, uh, so the Patriots got to beat the Bills this week. They or have to. We have to, or we're just not going to win this division. We're not going to win. It's a completely change of scenery in New England. Jacksonville, much of the same. Lost to Justin Herbert. Herbert had his best game as an NFL pro. So coming up now is my favorite time of the week, and I know Cameron's favorite time of the week because Cam just likes to flex his muscles and show how much ahead he is out of all of us. Like we say every week, it's almost like it's just a race for second place at this point. Uh (laughs) But, you know, I'm enjoying enjoying the race for second place because we're coming up. We're doing good. I was in last place last week by three points. I had a good week this week, pulling in double-digit points, hitting on my lock, and hitting on my upset as well. Or, no, miss. Okay, never mind. Actually, stack correction live on stream. Live on the podcast, actually. Uh I thought I hit on my upset because the Browns game was just too good. With Joe Burrow and That's true. Baker Mayfield. That's what I'm saying. Man. Baker Mayfield. Me and you both. We picked the Bengals. And yeah. You know, yeah. That, what a game. Yeah, that was a great game. And and right there, I I had I had thought that that game had counted for a second, yeah. but then I looked back and I good thing I wrote that I hit my lock my upset. I'm interested to see what Harrison Bryant and Donovan Peoples Jones does for the Browns now that OBJ is out of the offense for the year with a torn ACL, unfortunately, but. Uh, they're five and two. They got to win some games, and they got to start winning games against the Ravens and the Pittsburgh. They play week fourteen and week seventeen this season. So, so without that, we got nine points instead of ten. Oh. So we're gonna come home with fifty nine <laughs> points, and that is where we are sitting at. Now we're gonna talk to Colge here. Colge did. Sending his picks. He said he got his lock right and his upset wrong. Oh. He didn't tell me how many total points he had. But that puts him at 59 oh. points. Oh. So me and Colge are fighting right now. Ouchie. And now the comeback is real for Treve to not be the first one to reveal his picks every week. So Fitz, what do you got? Well, we had a nine-point week. Did we put that together? Yeah, so we wanted, you know, we wanted the double digits just like Trey, but we just couldn't do it because of the Bengals. They let us down, unfortunately. Uh, but we got 64 points. I got my lock right with the Chiefs. Bengals dropped me down, but we did pretty good. Nine points ain't bad. I'm at 64 for the year, so that's not bad. So right now, me and Colch kind of 
Chasing for third. Bryce kind of on the Catching come up. up. He's coming. He's coming. I'm, I'm chasing. I'm chasing. I'm Cam, why don't, why don't you reveal what you got? You know, last week I had 67, but I got my lock and my upset right this week. And, you know, I'd like to say I would be in double digits this week, but since the Pats and the Hawks decided to lose, I'm not. I only got nine. So a total comes to 76 this week. 76. 12 points behind. I'm just going to have to hope he shits the bed one of these days. <laughs> and we're going to make it back. Which I think is going to happen, Phil. I mean, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to try. I don't know and, about that, Cotton. We're gonna have to try and make things interesting come playoff time. We're gonna have to like double the points. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to, you know how it be. That's what we did last year too. Yeah. We bumped things up. We did things. Yeah, we did. <coughs> things, we did things to make it interesting to make the pot, you know, a little bit more interesting as Ariana makes her way into the room. So we're gonna take a break, sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. All right, so the first game of the week, we got the Carolina Panthers taking on the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons continue to lose in heartbreaking fashion. I mean, an accidental touchdown. That's going to put the nail in their coffin this week. Bryce, who do you got? I'm taking the Panthers. Uh, McCaffrey came off IR. I don't know if he's going to play, but I still think Mike Davis or McCaffrey will do it. Hi. But yeah, I just think that McCaffrey or Mike Davis, either one, is going to run it through the Falcons. The Falcons are demoralized. That was brutal watching Todd Gurley trying to hold himself back because he knew if he gave Stafford a chance, things would happen. Uh, I just think the Panthers are going to get him. Cole is also going to go with Teddy Bongwater. And the think, Carolina Panthers. And bull take, Robbie Anderson has 175 yards. I would two love to TDs. see it. I would love to see it, dude. I'm a big, big Robbie Anderson guy. Cam, who do you got? See, what I don't understand is, I'm going to choose the Panthers, but what I don't understand is the Falcons' offense in yards, and total yards, and rushing and passing is ranked number three. They are ranked number three in total offensive yards, and they are one and six. Isn't that just a mind fucker right there? It's just. Uh, you would think they would be a lot. Is not in their you would think they would be a lot better than what they are, but no. So I just like it. Just it just it just boggles my mind. I'm like, wow. How could you be? How could you lose so many of these close games? You need them. Even but. Matt Stafford, I mean, man, he hasn't had a game-winning icing drive like that in, in a while, in a long time. Yeah, they don't call him Matty. I can't call him Matty Ice anymore. You can call him Matty. Sit down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. facts. That's like get close. someone else in there. Get Trevor Lawrence. It looks like Matty Ice must be going to Matt Stafford because he's got the ice in his yeah. veins with the fourth quarter oh, comeback. Yeah, Stafford, it looks man. like either Trevor Lawrence is going to the Jets or Falcons. Matt Stafford, or the Jags. He, he has a. Mm -mm. Matt Stafford has now, I think it's 30. He's second behind Drew Brees for the most career comebacks. Jeez, that's pretty good. And Tom yeah. Brady's number one. Yep. Since 2009 or something. 30, 36 to Drew Brees' 38. That was insane. So That's pretty nice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close things out with Carolina to give us our first star, star frame. frame. $5 and to charity of your choice. We need, we need a clip of Colt saying that. So that is also now 6 of 7. On that Thursday means 6 night. of 8. Yeah. Thursday night games. Where we have opened up a star frame with a star frame. Mm -hmm. So coming up now, we got the Packers and the Vikings, NFC North. Fitz, who do you got? I'm taking the Packers. Green Bay, they're hot. Rodgers came back hot after playing a bad game. I expected him to kind of do that. Uh, I don't care if Jam uh, Aaron Jones or Jamal Williams is running back there. I think. 
The Vikings pass game will do good. I think Thielen and Jefferson will both have 100. But I don't think it'll be enough to keep up with Green Bay. Green Bay wins 45-20. I'm also going to take the Packers. Aaron Rodgers is playing out of this world. Devontae Adams is back. Moneyball. He's yeah, playing he's back crazy. too. He's yeah. playing crazy football right now. That Green Bay offense is just going to be hard to stop. Cam, who do you got? You know, I really want to choose the Vikings because I really like them. I really like their players and the offense that they got and the defense that they got. I'm not going to lie. I, they got the players. They're just not making the plays that they need to make. But I'm going to have to go with the backers. All right. And Colch sends a voice message for this pick. So we are going to listen to what Colch has to say. I am going to choose the Minnesota Vikings to upset the Green Bay Packers because... I need to choose an upset this week, and this was probably the best one I could find. So, that's it. Minnesota. Vikings are going to go and beat the Packers. This is going to have to be a high-scoring game. And, you know, I think Colton's going to probably say something about how much he likes Kirk Cousins, how he thinks that Kirk Cousins can get it done. He does have the receivers back there, some good tight ends. Dalvin Cook's coming back healthy. It's going to be a barn burner if they win it. I could see it. It's a division game. It could go either way. All right. Coming up next, we got the Tennessee Titans going up against the Cincinnati Bengals. Larry, who do you got? I'm taking the Titans. I'm going to say Derrick Henry gets 250 yards <laughs> against this Bengals defense. They're that bad. That defense is super bad. I like Burrow. I think Burrow will probably keep up because the Bengals defense, I mean the Titans defense has been bad in coverage this year. They had one good game last week against Big Ben. I don't think that will continue. I think it will be a shootout, but I think it's going to be right on DH's legs and he's going to run wild. Titans by a lot. Okay, I'm go. Man, I don't even think if it's going to be a shootout. The Bengals are going to score maybe 14 two touchdowns, and the Titans are going to put up 40 points. Titans are going to get the dub. I'm also going to choose the Titans. Ryan Tannehill has thrown over 4,300 yards in six games as a Tennessee Titans quarterback. 37 touchdowns, nine interceptions. I saw it on Twitter. Ryan Tannehill right now is playing like a top 10 quarterback in the league. And I did that because Colch told me that he trusted us to talk about how much we loved Ryan Tannehill. And that's why I did it. And Colch is also going to go with the Titans for our second star frame. I think that's like one of the few ten times that I've said star frame with you guys. Yeah, thanks, and, man. And I appreciate, appreciate it. it. That, that's that contribution. Yeah. You're coming, <laughs> you're coming in. Once in a while. Coming in a little bit. The douche has got to stay the douche. He's got to hold the roll. Yep. One for every, you know, like 15, 20, 25, whatever he feels like. Yeah, yeah we'll see how the cookie crumbles. Exactly. All right, coming up next, we got the Kansas City Chiefs going up against the New York Giants. I think Cam. this is going to be another quick, easy burner. Who do you got? Chiefs. Alright, simple as that. That's what he got. Well, I just want to bring up to point Frank Gore, 11 carries, 60 yards. <laughs> yeah, 11 yards carries. No, you no. didn't how say much, last week. How much? Guess what? That's five and a half yards <laughs> for a carry. Frank Gore. Now that's money ball. I get these other backs out of here. The other guy, Perrine, who carried the ball, guess what? How he did? 11 carries, 39 yards. Street, you want to tell me how much yards per carry that is? 3.3 something. That's not as good as 5.5 yards by Frank Gore. Give Frank Gore the ball. The Jets don't know what they're doing. They continue to not know what they're doing. They got a bell cow in their backfield that they don't use. The Chiefs are going to eat them alive. 49 to 3. I'm sorry, Jets. You're looking for Trevor Lawrence, but he might opt out and not even come to town. All right, what does Cole have to say about this game? I'm going to choose the Chiefs over the Jets because it's just too easy not to pick the Chiefs here. Too Simple easy. as that, and I'm going to pick the Kansas City Chiefs as my lock of the week for our third star frame. Vince, finish her off. That's $5 to charity of your choice. Of your choice. 
Whichever one. Yeah, there's a lot to choose from. There is. Whichever Tons. one you want. Tons. Tons. Coming up next is a game that I thought was the hardest to choose this week. We got the Detroit Lions going up against the Indianapolis Colts. Colts are going bold right off the bat. He's taking Detroit over Indianapolis. Larry, who do you got? This one was tough for me. I love the comeback win by Detroit, but I think they're just too good a, a run defense, and I, they're coming off the bye week. I think the Colts get it done over the Lions. I think it's going to be close. I think Rigoberto Blankenship, their kicker with glasses, hits a 55-yard game-winning field goal. The man out of Georgia. I'm going to take Detroit as my upset Ooh. of the week. Matt Stafford, baby, the new Matty Ice. Detroit? Ives. How is Detroit an upset? They're four and two. They're three and three. Four, Detroit is four. Oh, three oh, three. I, I thought you said I thought you said the Colts. The Colts right. four and two. Yeah. Detroit over the Colts. We're getting slim pickings over here, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm gonna take. I'm taking Detroit as my upset of the week, beating Indianapolis. You know, if I'm being honest, I'm going to have to agree with you there, partner. I really like that icy win that Matt Stafford played out. And Trevin is right. It's very hard to choose the upsets and locks now since it's getting closer to the week. So, this is going to be an upset. So, you're also going to ride with Detroit. I like it. I like it. I think they're going to win by <coughs> four. By four. That's fair. I can see that. Matty Ice, game-winning touchdown drive. Phil 20 Rivers to 24. Throws. Phillip Rivers throws a pick on the last drive. I can see that, too. Yeah. 20 to 24. I'm just hoping that. I think we, miss a I field goal. Blank and Chip's got it. They miss a field goal, and then he throws, a, throws an interception at the very end. Within 20 yards of the end zone. Coming up next, we got an AFC North battle, the top. Of the AFC North, we got Pittsburgh. No, who did Colton choose for yeah, that? Yeah, who did Colts go for? Oh, we picked Detroit. Oh, he picked I opened Detroit? with that. Oh, oh you did? Okay. I, 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 I didn't hear it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I opened with that. Okay. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. I opened with it. We got Pittsburgh going up against Baltimore. Larry, who do you got? I'm taking the Ravens. I think Big Ben threw three picks to a bad secondary last week. I don't think he can do that against the Ravens. Marlon Humphrey's been playing like Peanut Tillman, like a rendition of Charles Tillman out there. He's getting a forced fumble like all every other week. I mean, he's all over it. I like Marcus Peters. He's put, every time he gets traded, he seems to play hot for the the team that he gets traded to. So uh, I just think the Ravens are going to get it. A couple of costly turnovers from Big Ben. Lamar gets it done. It's going to be, I think he'll have two rushing touchdowns from Lamar. All right, Cam, who do you got? You know, this game was honestly really hard for me to choose. I really want the Steelers to go and keep going and stand. I, I don't know why, but for some reason, I want the Steelers to go undefeated this season. I don't even like the Steelers, but I want them to go undefeated. I don't know why, but the way they're playing, how hot they're playing, but Bryce is right. There were three interceptions last, three interceptions last week. You can't be doing that against good teams. But, uh, like I said, they are playing hot, and they're playing good. So, but the Ravens, I'm liking the Ravens. So I'm going to have to go with that one instead of the Steelers because I, I want the Ravens to win this one. All right, and now we're going to take a look at what Colch has to say for this week. Steelers are the best team in the whole league. There's no doubt about it. So I have to go with the Steelers over the Ravens. So he picks... Pittsburgh, and I'm gonna take Pittsburgh too. I'm gonna to say Pittsburgh remains undefeated. I'm gonna split a two-two split. One of the rare times. It's it's one of those division rivals that deserves a two-two split with all their history. Yeah, I would say so. I would say if there's a game this week mm -hmm. that deserved that two-two, maybe Detroit and Indy. Yeah, I would maybe, say. but that but, went three-one. So yeah. All right, next up, we got the Rams and the Dolphins. Tua's NFL debut. debut, and it's going up against this tough Rams defense. You got Aaron Donald. You got Jalen Ramsey. Fitz, who do you got against? Who do you got in this one? What an awful thing to do to Ryan Fitzpatrick. I would agree. He's only one game back from the division lead on the Bills. 
You know, you can't do it to the guy. He's fighting. He's always been putting out there. They've always been in there in one possession games. His interview, he looked so sad. He was, he was about to yeah, cry. Cause, cause he is depleted. He doesn't yeah. deserve that. He, I think that's not fair to the to I him. still didn't feel bad for him. But Tua is supposed to come in, and I think they're throwing him into a burn barrel right here. Especially this, against the Rams. This is the worst team to have him start against. The Rams are going to eat him up. He must be practicing a lot better than Aaron he Donald, must be. Aaron Donald's going to have three three sacks on him. He's The poor guy is going to get eight alive. I think the Rams win 35-10. to 10, And they're just going to, you know, it's just going to be dominant. The Rams have been good. They're going to continue to run good. They're going to throw it well with, to Cooper Cup. It's just going to be a dominant game by the Rams. Okay, I've already gotten this one. You know, this one's a no-brainer. I, Bryce is right. Tua, this is first game for Tua, and he's going against a mean defense. Aaron Donald, ooh. I would not want to be a rookie and have to line up and not have to face him. Oh, hell no. Uh, that would not be fun. I, I honestly don't th- I think they're going to get – I think Tua is honestly going to get a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown, and they're going to kick a field goal. So I feel like it's going to be more like 20 – Possibly 20 to 40. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. So, that's there a good, that, yeah, that's I fair. like that. I like that. Um, but uh, I, I think Tua is going to put uh, put on a good show for the – put on a good show. And I don't know. I feel like he deserves it. I, he, there he must, does. There must, be a, there must be a reason why he is starting over Fitzpatrick. He must be practicing they a lot. He doesn't deserve it. I he think, must be practicing better. I think they better. did it right now because – it's right when the bye week hits, so it's the best time for him to get practice in the system for it. But I just don't think he can do it when the guy's been in one possession games. He had the lead against the Bills. He yeah, but the thing is, Brian he needs Flores, to he needs to he needed to win those games and yeah, he lost but, them. No, he didn't lose them. He got the lead over the Bills. So I mean, he did what he could do. He had the lead for the Bills. Yeah, but the but drives the defense, that, you know. But he still got it to the end and and had the lead over them. And that's the same thing as I, I can't I don't can't believe they do it to Fitzpatrick like that, and him do that and then I think Brian Flores in the game against Seattle he kicked six field goals, he can't do that against Russell Wilson, go for it with Ryan Fitzpatrick, he he hit on some of those fourth and goal against you guys he hit on fourth and goal touchdown pass I mean you got to take chances with Ryan Fitzpatrick and I think. That's just sad that they did it to him. Two is going to get eight up, and it could be bad to him. Who knows? It's really bad. Paul is going to take the Rams as his lock. Yep, that's a good week. one. And I'm going to take the Rams as well for our fourth star frame. Five dollars to charity of your choice. A star frame fourth of the video. So we're on track. We're on track. Oh no. We're on track to hit. And this is the game that he doesn't want to talk about. This one's a dark one here. Yeah. We got the Buffalo Bills and the New England Patriots. Cam, why don't we just get out of the way, yeah. man? Why don't we just, why don't why we just, just go, go to you? Open, deep-hearted conversation. Why don't we just discuss it? You know, I'm, I, 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 there's a lot to talk about. But at the same time, there's not a lot to talk about, you know? Our offense isn't showing up. Our defense is somewhat there. Uh, it's doing a lot of the work, but... Our defense can't do everything, and Cam Newton needs the needs to learn how to throw the ball a little bit better. And to his teammates, that'd be great. Julian Edelman needs to learn how to catch. Uh, and yeah, our just our players aren't just doing anything. I think Byard is our number one receiving receiver right now. That's not good. He just got here. Like, come on, guys, Julian Edelman, you need to step it up. Your team captain, and Cam Newton, you're. You are a veteran. You need to look, play like a veteran, not play like the way you're playing. So, I don't know. This game's real tough for me to choose. I really want to choose the Patriots, but I don't think I'm going to. I think the Bills are going to, are going to sneak one out. And it's going to be like a, shit, probably 35-21 Bills. All right, Fitz, who do you got? I'm taking the Patriots. Really? I am. I think they're going to bounce back because this Bills team is not a good run team. They haven't been all year. Singletary has not ran well. And that was something that kind of we kind of watched last week with the, them 
they got gashed by the Niners, but that's because the Niners are such an excellent run offense. That's what they've always been built for. Uh, I don't think the Bills got that, so there goes that side of the offense. You just have to worry about Josh Allen throwing. I like your secondary against Josh Allen. I think Cam just does enough to get it done. I think it's it will be close. I think it's going to be like a 24-21 win by the Patriots at the end of the day. But they save their season, and Cam saves the job after being benched in the fourth quarter last week. Colch is going to side with Cam taking the Bills over the Patriots, and I'm going to have to agree as well. We're going to see Josh Allen take down Cam Newton. Now we got an intriguing matchup and a matchup that I'm very excited to watch in person because if it all lines up right, we're going to have Mike and Barn in the same room, possibly watching the Cleveland Browns taking on the Oakland Raiders. Fitz, who do you got in this one? Oh, God. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at this like, I honestly don't know. Let, let's start Let's start off with what Colge has. Colge? Wow. Oh. As a matter of fact. Did not pick this Col- game. Colge was so indecisive about that one. That was... The only game he did not <laughs> he, he, he did not decide on. Because ah. yeah, the last the voice message before Sunday night is the Steelers one. So yeah, I mean we got we got two teams, man. That it's it's split. I am gonna take the Cleveland Browns. Ooh. I'm gonna just say up front. I hate Barnes sometimes because I get bought into the Cleveland Brown fantasy and he he freaking takes me down this dreamland where he's like, look at this, Jarvis Landry, Kareem Hunt. Look Kareem at Hunt's this. got 463 yards Yeah, and, and three scores. And I'm just going to roll with it. I'm going to roll with it. I'm going to say the Browns beat the Raiders. I'm going to go with the Raiders. I took the Browns in my other one. I'm taking the Raiders in this one. It's that split type of game. I think it's just because the Browns only got Miles Garrett and Denzel Ward on defense. And I don't think that's enough to stop Josh Jacobs. I think Jacobs is going to have a good game. I think he'll have two touchdowns rushing. And I think Waller will eat him up, too. So, uh, Baker better come out shooting, just like he did last From week the in the second throw. half. Because, uh, he looked good in the second half. Yeah, he threw a dot to Donovan People jones That's what I'm saying. I want to see people like Harrison Bryant and Donovan People jones get involved in the offense with Hooper now with an appendix surgery that he had to have. Um, so... I'd like to see some of those people get involved. I think it could open their offense up even more until Nick Chubb gets back, and then they can go back to power run offense. But uh, I just think the Raiders are going to get it done. They're really playing for Gruden this year. Gruden's got them playing, and they're playing good. Nelson Aguilar is looking hot with uh, Derek Carr, and I think it's going to be a great game for the Raiders. You know, it would be hilarious if Colt was in the studio because if I would have announced that game, dude, it would have just been four dudes sitting here in complete silence. He didn't yeah. even pick the game. Yeah. That's, that's how straight down the middle that game was for us. That's All four saying. of us. All four of us. Cam, who do you got in this one? You know, <clears throat> as I'm sitting here and contemplating the choices I have to choose on this game, I don't think I've chose the Browns once. Maybe once or twice. If you the season ended today, the Browns for you would be one in four. Yeah. So, you know, and the Browns are five and t- are five and two right now. So I'm honestly, I really like I'm liking the Raiders. There's Miles Garrett and DJ Ward. Are honestly the only two defensive players that could stop Josh Jacobs, and you don't. There's not really too many linebackers that stand out to me that can 
stop. I could cover Darren Fells as well. And they're going to have to put a strong safety on him most likely to yeah. cover him. And that's just going to open up the deep the deep down deep down the field. So I'm going to have to go with the Raiders on this one, son. The Raiders. So we got a 2-1 to one Raiders to Browns. Unless Colge decides to pick the Browns, we'll get you an update on that one once it is available to us probably after this video gets posted. Coming up next, we got an AFC West battle between the Chargers and the Broncos. Fitz, who do you got? I'm taking the Broncos for my upset of the week because I, I think they look pretty good against Did Cam Newton. the Broncos Newton. have a worse record than the Chargers? Yeah. No, they're 2-4. and four. They're both 2-4. and four. Oh, they're both 2-4. and four. Yeah, we're both 2-4. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's pretty straight down the line. I think, is, but all I think right. it's an upset because of how good Herbert's been playing. He's thrown four touchdowns the past two weeks over to bye against Brady, against Breeze, and That's then against true. the Jags. Yeah, he's been sh- slinging. Minshew's right up there with those guys. I know, that's what yeah. I'm saying. You gotta love <laughs> Minshew. The Jags fans would agree he yeah. is the gunslinger, just like the rest of them. So, I do think this is an upset, and I think the Broncos are going to come out. I think... Yeah, I'd say I'd be an upset. Melvin Gordon is going to get rolling after being not involved last week, and Phil Lindsay is going to be a one-two punch type thing. I think the Chargers are going to come out slow. The Broncos have kind of been figuring things out defensively recently. And I think they're going to get it done because this is a division game. And I could just see it. I could just see something happening like that. Colge is going to take the Chargers, if Justin Herbert continues his domination, over the Broncos. Cam, who do you got? You know, I'm going to have to agree with Colton. Uh, I'm going to have to choose the Chargers on this one. I'm really liking uh, Herbert and the way he's playing. He's throwing a lot. He's keeping up with Drew Brees and Tom Brady. Keeping up with big quarterbacks like that. Making them close games. So, and I feel like with this, Drew Locke is still their quarterback for the Broncos, mm-hmm. Greg. And I don't think Drew Locke can do that. Can can keep up with those high, high throwing yard games. And I, I don't think the running game can can keep up with that as well with so I'm gonna have to go with the Chargers on this one. And I am also going to take the Los Angeles Chargers to beat the Broncos. Just Herbert looked really good. I'm gonna either have a really good week or a really bad week. Me and you have a lot of a lot of the same picks too. I have I, I, that is what I've noticed. There's only been four star frames mm-hmm. during this video. So this is this has been this could this could you know there's only um looks like Four games left. This could be a historically low star frame week. Coming up next, we got the Bears and the Saints. Cam, why don't you start this one off? What do you got? You know, the Saints and Drew Brees and Michael Thomas, he is back, correct? No hamstring no. and ankle oh. has been sidelined in oh, he's, been, no. he's, he's still sidelined. Yeah. But I don't know. Um... Uh, the, the, the Saints are still sneaking one out. They got one against the, the Panthers last week, which was pretty close, a uh, pretty close game. But uh, I don't know if they can do that against the Bears. The Bears' defense is looking pretty mean. I'm, like, and they're, I'm liking it. And their offense is looking pretty confident as well, not going to lie. Um, whether they have Mick Trubisky back there and Nick, Big Dick Nick Foles, uh, it, it's looking pretty good. I'm liking it. So I'm, I'm going to have to go with the Bears on this one. Colt said he's going to take the Saints. He said, and I quote, hope this doesn't bite me in the ass. I'm going to take the Bears. I like I like what Cameron said. I think the defense is playing well. And in games that they need to win against teams that they need to beat, this Bears team shows up and they play well. And this is not in prime time. This is, you know, it's kind of the undercard. This isn't a team that everybody. This isn't a game that everybody's gonna be watching. So, this is the time for Big Dick Nick to just kind of settle in, rest in his position, beat Drew Brees, and keep the Bears in the race for the NFC North. Fetch to the. Uh... I'm taking the Bears. No, I mean not the Bears. The Saints. I am taking the Saints because I don't care if Michael Thomas is back. Uh, this Bears team did not look good. Nick Foles didn't look good. Their defense didn't look that good at all, I don't think. Daryl Henderson had over five yards per carry. And 
Malcolm Brown, the other back, had over five yards per carry on this Bears defense with Akeem Hicks and Khalil Mack out there the whole time. So uh, I just don't think that defense has got it anymore. They just, I mean, the Rams demoralized them. I think the Saints are going to do the same kind of demoralizing. I think if Emmanuel gets back, he'll have a big game. If not, Trey Kwan will have two touchdowns. Alvin Kamara will carry the workload in receptions and in the backfield. The Saints are going to get it done. I'm going to say 31-20. I don't know. I like, I like what the Bears are putting on the field. Next up, we got an NFC West battle. Is this the Seahawks get-right game after they lose to the Cardinals? We got the Seahawks and the 49ers. Colts takes the Hawks over the Niners. I'm going to have to agree with them. 49ers came off a big win against New England, but there's no way they beat New England and Seattle in back-to-back weeks, in my opinion, so I'm going to take the Seahawks. Fitz, who do you got? They beat the Rams and the Patriots in must-win games in this NFC race. So if they the, did. If the 49ers, they kind of need this one to get back in it. If they win this one, they're 5-3. and three. Seattle knocks down to 5-2. and two. Then wherever the Rams do this week against the Dolphins, either 6-2 and two or wherever, and Arizona's up 5-2 and two with the bye week. So I think this is going to be a barn burner, but I think Seattle pulls it out. Russ has just been doing things that's unbelievable. He's putting balls in places where CBs can't get to him. My DBs did the best they could against Tyler Lockett all that game. They did the best they could. They are in the best position possible, and he put it on the money. Uh, I think Seattle's going to get it 31-24. It's going to be super close, and I think it's going to be on their new rookie running back, legs with Carlos Hyde being hurt. Alright, can't who do you got? You know, I'm going to have to go with the Hawks on this one. Um, I don't think uh, the 49ers can uh, beat the Seahawks after the Seahawks just got this nasty L, close L against the Cards. Um, I think the Seahawks are going to bounce back and just play lights out football. And that will be our fifth Star Frame! Five dollars to charity of your choice. So that's five star frames. That ties the lowest of the season. And the last game on Sunday, of course, of course, Colch came through and gave himself a recorded performance. And here it is. Take two. What in the fuck? Maybe your volume up, maybe. Uh, I'm, on, I'm on Bluetooth, ladies and gentlemen. It was on the, Bluetooth. That is the problem. Now we figure out Treve from Treve Talks in a live recorded podcast is not very good. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Sunday night! And right there, Colge. Man, did pretty good. That was a top tier Sunday night vocal talent it was, performance. It was quick. It was easy, and it sounded great. Week by week, Cold is improving every better, every single time. Better than Kelly Clarkson, that's for sure. That's for damn sure. We got the Coming NFC. For job. We got the NFC East, and the NFC East should have a Sunday night game. I don't give a fuck. We got They're the garbage. We got the Eagles and the boys. Disgusting. I got the Eagles. Taking down Dallas, Fitz it up. Well, here's what I'll tell you. I here's my bold take: is I think Kellen Moore should decide to sign back to the active roster to be this team starting QB. He'd be better than Andy Dalton. Like, I thought, or didn't Andy he, Dalton get a co- uh, concussion? He did get a concussion. That's what I'm saying. So he might not play this week. That's what I'm saying. He would be better than Andy Dalton. He's the OC. He knows the playbook. He's got the playmakers around him. C.D. Lamb, you know, they still have good roster. It's still there. He's just got to throw some good balls. Why not resurrect your career as Kellen Moore? As and Kellen come Moore. Moore. Come back in a situation. He's a too sh- old now. No, he's in a shitty division. He's not too old. In a shitty division. It's like 31. That's uh, 30. 
twenty nine. Uh, twenty. He might be twenty nine. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> he might be in his late twenties, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, let him run wild. Never but have. I'm saying that's because this game is gonna be. I have think, to go with the Eagles in a lock. That's how confident. That's what I'm saying. I, I think it's gonna be a blowout by the Eagles, and I think Richard Rodgers has two touchdown catches from Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz, Wentz also off. gets. Cal Morris thirty two. Thirty two. He's an old well. man. He can't play. Andy Dalton's 36, and he's worse. <laughs> that, is well. that is true. That's a bad point. And, like I said, Colge is going to take the Eagles, and I'm also going to take the Eagles for a sixth. Star frame! And that is going to secure that this will not be the least amount of star frames in a video. And to close it off, on Monday night, we got... Tampa Bay, who looked really, really good last week. The past week. two weeks, 45 points each week. Taking on Danny Dimes, who had a great run last week. 80 yards fell on his face. But still a great run. We got the Bucks. We got the Giants. That's it, yeah. I'm taking the Bucks as my lock of the week. I uh, just think Tampa Bay's rolling. AB's in the offense now. He probably won't play this week. But uh, he said uh, they're supposed to play next week. He's supposed to play next week. Yeah, they'll play next week. Yeah, well, then, yeah. if he does play next week, I think they'll get it rolling. I think Gronk's going to have two TDs this week against the Giants. I'm going to say another 40-plus 40, 40 point game from this Bucks offense. Ronald Jones with another 100-yard game. Tampa Bay is going to look great all year, and this team's rolling hot already. I think each week Gronk keeps knocking off the rust and he's starting to get better and better with the things he's doing with Brady. So watch out for Gronk. It's right. part of time Gronk. Cole also takes Tampa Bay. Cam, who do you got? You know, I'm going to have to go Tampa Bay here too. It's a no-brainer for me there, Cotton. And I'm also going to take Tampa Bay for the seventh and final. Star frame! Five dollars to charity of your choice. Seven star frames in that video. So that's going to conclude our week number eight NFL picks, locks, and upsets. Larry, any final words for the people? Have a wonderful week, guys. I'm on a uh, Cardinals are on a bye, so we're just living living a good life, being two and now in the division. Feeling okay. good. Cam, what about you? Uh, have a great day and a great night wherever you are. Whatever time you're watching. That's great. about it. Great words from a great man. Anyways, if you guys haven't already, you guys can go ahead and check all the links down below. You can like me on Facebook, at True Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at True Talks. Follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a video. I drop new content on this channel three days a week. And the way I work with me, them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.